This is Searching the Scriptures devotional number 25, and this week we've been looking at a passage in Philippians 4, 11 through 13, and there is one uh, word in this passage, uh, it's the word of want, a Strong's number 5304, that I really didn't uh, elaborate on, but I would uh, like to uh, now speak to that, and it's also found in another citation, in Mark 12, 44, and it concerns the humble widow who gave all the money she possessed, all her living is how it's uh, uh, written, uh, to the Lord in childlike trust. And I'll start in Mark 12, 41, and I'll read down to uh, verse 44. And Jesus sat against, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> and Jesus sat over against the treasury, and behold, and beheld how the people cast money into the treasury, and many that were rich cast in much. And there came a certain poor widow, and she threw in two mites, which make a farthing. And he called unto him his disciples, and saith unto them, Verily I say unto you, that this poor widow hath cast in, hath cast more in than all they which have cast into the treasury. For all they did cast in of their abundance, but she of her want. And this word want, as I mentioned, is Strong's number 5304. But she of her want did cast in all that she had, even all her living. Can you picture this scene? In the midst of this beautiful temple is this treasury, and men and women of means are apparently depositing great sums of money under the watchful eye of this inconspicuous preacher who sees everything and knows everything about each and every one, not only in the temple that day, but all who have ever lived or who would live throughout time since he created them. He knows their every thought, word, and deed intimately. They are being scrutinized by the penetrating eye of God Almighty, the Word made flesh, and are being weighed in the balance of God's Word since the fall, as we read in Hebrews 4, 12-13. For the word of God is quick or living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight but all things are naked and opened unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. We know that his assessment with regard to this widow who typifies a true child of God is correct and accurate in every respect because he possesses all the facts, all the truth, because he is the way, the truth, and the life as we read in John 14, 6. Moreover, he knows the tiniest details and the weaknesses and sinfulness of the human heart, according to John 2, 23 to 25. Now, when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover, in the feast day, many believed in his name when they saw the miracles which he did. But Jesus did not commit himself unto them, because he knew all men, and needed not that any should testify of man, for he knew what was in man. And that word commit is the word believe. Uh, remember it says that uh, what is the work of God, and uh, I forget in one of the other uh, passages in John, it says this is the work of God, that ye believe, which is the verb form of the noun faith, which we know is the faith of Christ. That is the only faith that will save us. Uh, in our last lesson, we spent some time trying to understand the 
spiritual ramifications of the Greek word how to abound. And uh, one of the most incisive passages that bears on our subject of contentment is Luke 12, 15, where the same word is rendered the abundance. And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. It's also the identical word translated abundance here in Mark 12, 44. But notice the contrast with this dear widow who gave of her want. For all they did cast in their abundance, Strong's number 4052, but she of her want, Strong's number 5304, did cast in all that she had, even all her living. Now, you know, we have to ask the question. We're at the beginning of a new year, and what about you? What about me? Do we find ourselves dissatisfied about money or our job or perhaps our spouse or our children? Or are we grateful for all that God has done for us and through us? As, if we're going to be honest, we really deserve nothing at all. Are we unhappy with God's will? Or do we rejoice in the trials and hardships that God allows because they draw us closer to Him and to His Word in humble submission and obedience? Are we worried about the cares of this world? Or do we set our affections on things above? in Colossians 3, 2. And do we bring our concerns boldly before the throne of grace, Hebrews 4, 16. Are we more interested in our own selfish whims and desires, or are we beseeching God that we might truly seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and that in doing so, he might work in us to will and to do of his good pleasure, as Philippians 2.13 exhorts. Could it be that God would enable us to find true contentment in his word and in him alone today and in each day of this new year that we have entered into? 